This is GB Camper Conversions latest van tour on the Berlingo panel van. Now we have done one or two of these before. And um, we'll start on the outside. So it was originally just a panel van when we had it. Uh, we fitted them some windows, privacy windows. Side loading door and opposite are both opening windows, which is nice. And the back barn doors are just fixed, privacy glass. And then this is their 240 volt mains inlet as well. We've stuck with the black theme just so that it coincides with the rest of the van. Oh, anyone would think it was cold out here. But let's get inside and have a look and see what we've done. So the half opening privacy glass windows, like I say, one on the side loading door and one on the driver's side as well. So the main entrance to this Berlingo panel van is going to be the side loading door. Um, with the panel vans, they're not, and with it having the barn doors, I haven't found a way of getting out the van when, once you're in. Um, just because of the way that it locks. I, I think it's down to it being a commercial van so you can't get out once you're in. So the only way you can get in and out is through the side loading door. Hence why we've kept the access free. Nice little compact conversion. Um, it is for two people and I believe they are having, um, they're having a drive away awning for definite because we've got to put a rail on there. But as you can see, They've gone for the, uh, a grey theme on the furniture. And we've done a few things a little bit different in this one compared to what we normally do. A nice light blue seat cushion. Really brightens the van up, looks quite nice. So we've insulated it, we've sound deadened, we've carpeted the panels that we needed to. And... Uh, We'll start on the unit. So there was a few things that we were asked to put in there. And the first one was a sink with a cold water supply. So as you can see, we've got the pivoting tap. Everything's in chrome, just so it all sets it off quite nicely. Um, the two containers are in this cupboard. So we've got a fresh container and we've got a waste container. So it's just a case of, obviously you fill up your fresh, once you've filled your waste up, swap the, con well, empty your waste and fill up your fresh at the same time. And that just fits quite nicely in there. So what else we've got in here? Um, this, we've, got, we've still got the, the, the cellophane on the, on the top of the lid. This is a top loading compressor fridge, 20 litre. So you can get plenty of stuff in there. It's still got all the plastic on inside, on the stainless steel. Uh, and the switch for that is inside the cupboard with the water. So the thermostat dial, because it needs to be mounted on a surface, it's not actually built into the fridge itself. It is separate. So you do need to mount it somewhere. Um, and, and I think the thickness of the spindle that comes out isn't, <coughs> excuse me, isn't quite 15 mil. So, You've just got to be a little bit careful where you put that. So it's inside this cupboard. Uh, this front compartment, it's not actually a compartment. What I've done is I've put no handle on it and no button on it on purpose because it's purely a service hatch for me. If there's any service work got to be done on the fridge in the future, possibly. So that's the 20 litre Vitrofigo top loading compressor fridge and that fits in there quite nicely. So you're probably wondering, we haven't got a lot of works surface in here, but what we have done then, at this end, we put quite a nice long lift up table. So there's a nice bit of extra work surface. Also, what we have done, I don't know if you noticed, but we put the table rails on we put a table rail on this window storage box and one on the back door. 
Yeah, and what that is, so down in this compartment down here is where the table lives. So this is the dining table. It's on a pivoting leg with an adjustable height as well. So we can just undo that. Clip it on our, clip it on our rail, get it to the correct height, do your leg up, and now you can you can slide that table, he says, up and down that rail. So you've got two bits of extra work surface now. You know, somebody can sit that side, you can sit here. I mean, they, they hold it a fair bit of weight, but you've got to be a bit careful because um, it, it is only screws that are going into 15 mil ply, but the ply has good screw retention. So you can put a fair bit of weight on them. They're pretty good. That, obviously, you can load it with whatever. So that's two bits of extra work surface, which really come in handy in a small van. Uh, and like I said, not only do you get this rail here, we also get the rail on the outside so that we can clip this table when it's a nice day or it's a little bit warmer. You wouldn't think it was cold just because I got my hat on. But it is, it's freezing. Yeah, so on a nice day, again, because it's got the adjustable leg, we can clip it on our rail outside, adjust our leg, and there we go. A little table for outside as well, which is ideal for when it's nice and warm. So, um, equipment wise as well oh actually before we carry on I'll just touch on a bit of extra storage that uh, this customers opted for and again this is something that we've only just put in this panel van um, we do it in the standard Bolingos, Combos, Vauxhall Combos, Peugeot Partners is window storage boxes now obviously there is no window there because it's a panel van so we've just made it a compartment with a bottom shelf it's quite uh, sizable to be honest you'll get a fair bit of stuff in there and then we've gone for obviously that one was built onto the worktop so it was slightly deeper whereas this one this side is just working within the sort of confines of the space that we've got and that's a it's a bit shallower but still again a, a, a bonus bit of extra storage so it doesn't actually use up any more space of the van, if you like, because nothing was ever going to go there. And if it was a Bolingo, uh, if it was the MPV of whatever version, it would just have glass there anyway. So I think it's a good thing to have a little bit of extra storage. So storage wise as well, there is a compartment under this bench seat that's free. For anything else and like I say they are taking a drive away awning so you can pile a load of stuff in there as well when you get on site these are the compromises obviously you've got to make when you've got a smaller vehicle so try and get as much as you can in um, and then opt for a drive away awning it just allows you to take a bit more stuff a bit more freedom all good so on the electrical side on this then so uh, they have like I've already showed you, they've got mains electric, so we fit a RCD protected uh, consumer unit with double pole breakers in there. Um, so they've got mains, two 240 volt sockets. They've also got an AGM leisure battery, just a bit better than a lead acid, um, slightly less discharge, charges a touch quicker, not as good as lithium by the way, but it's a bit better than a lead acid. Um, so they've opted for the AGM battery which the center switches for the lights in the ceiling so a couple of LED lights really light it up nicely when it's when the, the dusk starts coming in coming in a bit earlier now we're in winter and then again on the 12 volt side we've got the 12 volt power socket and the twin USB socket so the 2.1 and the 1 amp USB sockets which all run from the leisure battery. Like I said, they've got the mains, but standard with the mains, we always fit a transformer charger. So what that'll do is when you're on mains, it'll charge up the 
leisure battery while you're on mines as well, which is always good. Um, again, charging from a charging point, uh, this has, because it's a newer vehicle as well with the smart alternator, it's got a DC to DC charger unit in there as well. So that's good. It'll charge the leisure battery whilst they're driving. And then the last piece of electrical equipment that they've had fitted is an inverter. Um, and again, it's a, we have experimented with this before and we know it works. We've done bigger vehicles with bigger inverters and more AGM batteries and we've never had any issues. Um, and the, the intention with that is, so it was a way of heating the van or using some kind of 240 appliances when they're off grid. Only small things, maybe laptops, chargers, that kind of thing, or even a very small heater. Um, so it's a 2000 watt continuous output inverter, 4000 watt peak. Um, and all that's running, we've just run a cable from the socket and put another 240 socket in the worktop. And that is purely coming from the inverter. So like I say, it was, a, it was for a heating purpose and we have experimented with this and we know that it works. So basically we've done it before where you've just had a little fan heater. As long as you're not cranking it up to the 2000 watts, because it is only a 2000 watt inverter, but it will run it for quite some time. So it was either that or try and fit a diesel heater in here. So you've got the onboard diesel heaters where you need to have the separate tank which is where do we put it for a start? It's okay if you haven't got a lot of equipment, but this has got quite a bit of stuff in. So that was out of the question. The other thing then is obviously you need a hole in the floor if you're gonna mount it in the vehicle for the exhausts, inlet and outlets to go out. It's a small vehicle. There's not much floor space that's free underneath the vehicle. So again, it was just less hassle, less work. They're quite expensive. They've opted for the inverter with the upgraded leisure battery and it works absolutely fine and we can definitely vouch for that so that's all the electrics i don't think i've missed anything the tap is working on a micro switch uh, so again that is only working when you turn the tap on and back off again so let's just drop this table down they're nice and easy to operate as well. Maybe quite a few of you have got these, but it, it lifts up and you can hear it lock in place. So you can put your weight on. And there's just two finger press, like two little buttons at the end of each arm. If you just push them in, drop it down, it'll almost sit flat up against the worktop. Head clearance is absolutely fine in this. I'm just over six foot. Um, so we make our seat boxes, we make them 250 mil high, which doesn't sound a lot, but then our upholstery that we have done, we use 75 mil thick foams with the Dacron and the stock in there. So the Dacron plumps it up a bit more, so it looks quite plump. And then obviously when you get off it, it just plumps back out again, so that's quite nice. So if you like, in total, we're looking about 325 from the base to the top of the cushion, and I've got decent head clearance. I have to actually sit up to get my head to touch. So that's just a little pointer there. If any of you do in your own vans, sort of seat height wise, if you aim for that kind of height, if you're around about six foot, obviously if you're a little bit shorter, you can go a little touch lower. But height wise maximum, maybe 350 if if you're doing your own sort of seat boxes so i'll show you how the bed works and what we got in length and why we've done what we've done yeah so we were asked for the center seat to be movable um, and removable i believe they've got a little dog uh, and that's where the dog cage is going to go when they're traveling um, i'm sure they'll secure it um, any way that they can but the point of this seat, because we can't get out of these back doors once we're in, this seat is movable and it just comes down the centre of the aisle. And it just sits right at the back alongside that one. So you can get in. 
okay, you can't get into this cupboard, but as long as you're full up with water, that's the only reason you'd want to get up there, so get in there rather. Make sure you've filled your water up, make sure your waste's empty. 10 litres, it goes fair old way in a small sink if there's only one of you, or maybe even two of you. So you can sit that way round now. So the L shape is now at this end of the van. That frees up all that floor space up there for the pooch. So we've got a really nice, clean access there. It's nice and wide. But because we've got the lift up table, we get that bit of extra work top. And then the storage unit, it houses everything that they've asked for. Fridge, sink, all the electrics with the extra storage on the side as well. So that's how the seating works as regards to moving this seat up and down the aisle. I'm going to show you now how the beds work and what maximum we've got out of it. Because it is a panel van, uh, the front passenger twin seat isn't movable, so it doesn't slide backwards and forwards like your regular MPV that's got two single seats in the cab. So we had to sort of work around that, and I'm going to show you how we did that. So all we're doing, we're going to slide this centre seat back up to its original position. We put a pull handle on the front of the bench seat. They've, it's got four heavy duty runners on. And all we do is give it a pull, slide it out to its maximum. This is just the infill for the cushion, although it's used as a backrest as well, but it is actually just the infill for the bed. That sits in there. Now, the driver's side, so this is again why we've got two single seats at the front. Normally that is just one seat. So the reasons were, one is because they wanted to be able to convert it so it was an inverted L, if you like, with the single seat down here, the long bench seat up there. And so that we can now, the seat behind the driver's seat, we can now extend that way when I push that driver's seat forwards. So driver's seat, we just drop it forwards. There is extra infills. A little bit on the rake. So this has got a pull handle here as well. It's just a case of pull it till it won't come no further. This is another infill that just sits in there. So that is, it's just over six foot now um, in length. And it's 450 wide with that extra as it pulls out that's now 850 wide we've already got this seat base here but this one also extends obviously it doesn't extend this way because we've got a fixed seat but this was what this cushion was for so with this cushion now as a padded as, a, as an extra it's the same height it just sits basically on the as the center seat folds down because it folds that one folds slightly lower than what this one does but with that on there it's going to have some velcro on it so it stops it from sliding around but obviously you, you can't lift the seat up with it on the back and then you're wondering what this extra piece is for well i'm going to come right there and show you so this seat now also extends this way so we get just at this one point, a little bit of extra width. I think the idea is that they're gonna sleep with the heads down by the door end, and then the feet are gonna come up this end. So you've got over seven foot in the center section in length, and then you've got just over six foot on the outer. So that's how the bed works in this. We've tried to get as much length out of it as what we possibly can. Like I say, with it having a fixed seat there, and you can only adjust that driver's seat. And the other thing that actually, that is missing, normally behind that driver's seat, there's a metal frame. Because again, it's a commercial vehicle, I think it's to protect you if you're carrying goods that don't bonk you on the back of the head. So this customer has removed that metal cage. Now the center seat seat belt was attached to it and he has been informed by his local MOT station uh, that as long as he puts a lap belt on there, then it is MOT compliant. 
Now that centre seat is weight restricted anyway and age restricted, I'm sure it is. I know it's weight restricted. So you're only looking at getting very something very small. I mean, it's a small seat anyway. So that's what's also allowed us to extend that seat this side forwards because if the metal cage was there obviously it's sitting a little bit further back it makes this seat quite a bit shorter so that's why we've managed to get the extra length good job you mentioned because i forgot so yeah that's how the bed works in this one i'm going to put it all away it literally takes minutes so drop your backrest on there slide your seat shut it's on lockable runners so that locks shut you can pop that up as a backrest if you want to. Round to the driver's side, drop your little infill, shut the little compartment. Now you can adjust your driver's seat back. I've been using this as a backrest for here. Shut that one, job done. So that's the latest micro camper conversion from GB Camper Conversions based in Tamworth in Staffordshire. We do have a website www.gbcamperconversions.com There's an inquiry form on there, there's contact numbers if you can get in contact with us. Uh, and if you like this video you can like, press the little thumbs up at the bottom to show us that you like, it keeps the channel going. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel. And if you want to be notified next time we do a video, just click the little bell in the corner and it'll let you know when we're up next. But thanks for watching. I'm going to go and get in the warm now because it's quite cold. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Hey.